Well, hello and welcome everybody. I'm here with Z and I call her that because I have no idea how to say her real name. Zyra. Zyra. That's just hard for me to remember. Yeah. It's the spelling that throws everyone off. Yeah. 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 Z. <laughs> <laughs> And we are, uh, you might recognize her from the video with Monty, a military macaw, who was a very unique challenge. And so she came to us uh, not too long ago. For a free flight? Yeah, and yeah, wanted yeah. to take out her son Conyers. Yeah. On purpose. <laughs> this time. Ooh, so the first mishap was probably right when we started working. Um, and then, uh, it was, I was feeding them, and then when the weather is nice, like, my birds are out in the shop. Um, so we have the garage door open and stuff like that. And then, so I was changing their bowl out, and the, it's not like a latch or anything. It's a circle that you flip up to open the door, and then, like, it flips down, and that's what holds it. Well, I guess the circle flipped down before the door, so I thought I had closed it, and I didn't. So it was, um, it was enough for them they could just push it out and like crawl out of it. So when I went to go swap the bowls, Pixie flew out and then um, I, something must have spooked her because usually like if the door is closed or something, they'll just fly to me where the food's at. So I don't know what happened that day, but like she went to go to me and then just flew out the garage into the neighbor's street and I was like, and then I got another phone call. <laughs> and I thought, because I think we had just talked either that day or the... We literally had just gotten off the phone. Yeah. So this was all happening while we were probably on the phone. Because we were driving into town. So the second time, <laughs> my husband and I had to go in and run some errands in town. And like for us, town is an hour and a half. Um, so we went and right when we got there, my brother called me. And he was like, hey, I just went to go check on the birds and the yellow ones aren't there. And I was like, what do you mean they're not there? And he's like, they're, the door is open and they are not in their cage. And the good news about that is you were two and a half, three months into the flight course. Yes. So we hadn't gone outside yet, but they had most of the necessary skills. Descending was, descending is the one that like gets everybody. Yeah. Especially when there's kind of this, this tipping point, if you will, of when a bird gets too much speed, it can't, it doesn't know how to put on the brakes properly. I remember feeling guilty for how not worried I was for you <laughs> because she calls me and she explains like, hey, this is what happened. I was like, cool, no worries. Like, go to bed, yes. be up before sunrise, they'll be right there. And uh, so how did the recovery go? So it was, um, I think it was more frustrating for me than it was for them because I saw they wanted to come down. Like I, I could see them like wanting to and like pacing on the branch and like calling back to me, but there was nothing I can do. Like they were way too high up for me to go grab a ladder or anything like that. So it was just, it was just the waiting game. And it was, man, I think that's the worst part. Like just hoping that they figure it out and come back. So I mentioned inside one of the biggest challenges I think in free flight is that the biggest thing holding birds back is us. And so the benefit that you had of, of your birds experiencing 18 to 24 hours outside mm -hmm. is they gained so much knowledge that now when, when I'm here, the doves didn't spook them, the tree full of chickadees didn't spook them. Um, I think there was one spook. I don't know that we determined what it was, but yeah, they didn't go far. Mm -hmm. um, and this is also very different terrain than we usually do first flights in. Yeah. Which I know Jamie was nervous about. <laughs> um, but, you know, this is kind of one of these things where I'm always saying, like, hey, if your trainer's not staying current or your breeder's not current or your vet's not current, then the information's invalid. So this is a spot for me to call myself out where we have updated some of these, like, kind of level ones, if you will, I wanted the security of the trees to stop your birds from a long fly off okay. if something spooked. Mm -hmm. And normally we'd say go to a flat open area. Um, but in this case, I wanted to get your birds used to the trees in your house and it fits what your need is. Yes. And so you can fly them right off your porch yeah. and know that, that the trees aren't the issue. It's coming out of them and descending. And I think we're able to achieve quite a bit of that development today. Yes. I think that, and also for me, a big one was when they're looking at something and you were like, 
watch them like stop like look they're looking up for a reason and then you know you kind of get more of a I guess um sense of what do you call it uh, it's a better understanding uh, of the surroundings yeah so it's it's one of those things where that was a big one um and you can see it like when it wasn't threatening they were so kind of fluffy and looking up it's mm -hmm. like oh i know that's just a dove or anything like that but when that plane went over and it was the first time they had like seen or heard that loud of a plane their feathers went like flat down so it was there was more of a worry and you can you can see it all like on their body like it's all body language, all body language. and you can totally see the difference and then you can also see once the threat or what they think was a threat once they're like ah, eh, it's no big deal they go back to being fluffy they'll still know it's there and keep an eye on it but their their feathers come back up so that was for me that was like a big one because my vision's terrible and they can obviously see way more than i can so. versus filling her up super fast oh, gotcha. okay. no. so i don't know if you saw that lily saw something so jamie looked up there too and it wasn't enough that Lily was too concerned. She took a flight, but she Pixie's did. looking at something too. Okay. Definitely something. I just can't see it though. Me either. Pixie. Oh, there it is. What? I see. Oh, yeah. yeah. Jesus. That's way up there. Oh, yeah. Ready? So that's just uh, oh, I think it's a vulture, <laughs> which is not a threat. I see it. And so. Yeah, on the first day it was like we saw a vulture riding the thermals, mm -hmm. and they were like, okay, cool, yeah. not a threat. Another one, not a threat. Yeah. And then we saw a hawk, and they were a little yeah. more like, hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then the hawk passed, and, uh, and the planes, and like there's, there's just, like you said, kind of those different stages of concern yeah. that we as trainers have to really pay attention to so that we know not to push them too far during those moments and trust that they're smart enough to realize, okay, that's a, that's a lethal threat. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna just wait this one out. Yeah. See the light of a new day dawning Feel the love from a beating heart Catch a ride to the top of the world This is where we start No, we can't make it last forever We gotta use all the time we have And you know that we'll never say never If we ever get the chance And it's good to be alive It's good to be alive So, feel less, less stress? Yes. Better spot on. Very much less. I'm like, oh yes, we're not in the tree. It's nicer when it's on purpose, huh? Yes. <laughs> 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 you guys have done and it looks it looks super clean and I think I'm probably most happy to hear you like talking through the sessions because I'm not I'm not seeing you like blindly trust these birds you're really thinking through it and you're like okay asking the right kind of questions and and uh, 
you know, at, for a first time, it looked amazing. And I think just really being in tune to when they're starting to fill up, like Jamie noticed it first. Yeah. Um, that's important that we get them away before we're out of power. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I think the more I free fly, the more I learn that we are the biggest thing that gets in the way of these birds. I can see that. Like yep. they're so capable and it's like, they're going to screw up for sure in the very beginning and it's how that's dealt with. And then once, once they under, like I'm saying, kind of expand the home base, once their, their confidence is up, like they're going to just have a blast and you can just trust that they're not going anywhere. And if they, you know, they'll stick in a close area unless there's a chase and then, yeah. you know, their characteristics, they're going to haul it back and forth to each yeah. other and they'll find each other and they're so freaking loud. They're easy for you to find. <laughs> yeah, looking at, that's, that's the one thing where I'm just like, okay, because you can always hear them. Yeah. Like always. Especially I hear like a little echo and you can always hear them. Usually people see us teach one person with one bird. Mm -hmm. um, your husband was a, a part of some of the videos and with his work schedule and everything, it largely fell on you, but you have two birds. Yeah. So how did that kind of play into your training or, you know, the good side of it or the challenges that that offered? So the challenges is Pixie's my more willing to fly. She's the one that wants to do the work. She's the one that wants to be moving. Where Poppy's more, I guess, it, it comes down to food motivation. Um, but so like Pixie will fly away from me and come back and do boomerang flights because she's like, look what I'm doing. Like I'm working. So I get a treat and Poppy's just like, I'm here and I'm cute. So you should give me a treat anyways. <laughs> so I think when they're together, Pixie's wanting to fly and like leave pushes Poppy to do more work. However, Poppy's also my better one at stationing because she's lazier or like not as motivated. So when we're trying to do station together, it's harder for them to stay long enough for me to like get some distance between them because Poppy is just like, let's go. I'm doing this, we're going. Where if I was just working with Poppy one-on-one, -on -one, she would wait until I like called her. Um, so there's pros and cons. Uh, when we had that fly off and they were up in the tree, Pixie came down first and because they are so bonded, um, she was like, well, Pixie's there. Like now I really have to step up my game to make it back too. So it's just, I would say overall, I love it. It's a great thing um, because, you know, we talked about anchor birds and like them always wanting to come back to that bird or calling back. So in that aspect is amazing. But as far as like when we were doing the like inside training or like stationing or things like that, it was just because one of them is so antsy. Yeah. It just kind of ruined it for the... So what I'm, what I'm hearing is the payoff was outside. Yes. Yeah. One thousand percent. Yes. Inside, I can't go anywhere without like Pixie finding me. <laughs> now I want to give a big shout out to you because you were probably, and this is going to offend some of you, probably one of the easiest students to work with. <laughs> uh, usually we do like hour long video calls or phone calls once a week. And your, uh, your calls were like, five minutes cool that's what to do i get it makes sense because of your dog training background so i would love to hear more and if you can share a little bit about your dog training background because as a bird trainer that helped me get the message you so much easier and i could skip all the like really deep details and stories and reasons because you had yes. other knowledge that had to be modified for birds but you had a really solid foundation yes so um let's see i've never had so i don't have like, I never went to school to become a dog trainer, I guess is like the best way to say it. But my experience started, God, when I was, I was always that kid, like when I was little that always loved animals and it comes from my mom. Um, so I was always the one like doing research on different breeds and like watching the dog shows and like what I wanted to do when I grew up. And it was always vet. Like I, I wanted to be a vet so badly, but you know, the older I got, the more I understood that there's always complications and I could never, I don't think I could ever handle losing an animal. Like if I was losing someone else's like, you know, family member and that, that was something where I was like that, I can't do it because yeah. of that, that would ruin it. And then that would be a waste of eight years in school <laughs> right. and stuff. So I didn't, but like I always volunteered at shelters and stuff like that. And then just from, 
I guess understanding the dog or the animal because you can learn so much from animals um, at the end of the day and an animal's not gonna pretend to be something they're not like you get what you get and then so that's kind of how it started and I started volunteering at shelters and then we started getting into like basic trainings on like what I needed to do and because I was so good with them I started dealing with more of the aggressive dogs that came in which are obviously harder and stuff like that so I went that went that um and then I ended up getting my first dog which was Luna and um that was that was 11 years ago at least and with her is when I started getting more into the like um we uh, what do you call it Agility. obedience so we started doing obedience and then we got into the higher level of, of obedience and because she is a border collie and she's just constantly going um I was like let's do all the sports like let's keep you busy let's get into this so we got into agility we got into lure coursing um and then because of her advanced obedience and stuff she got her titles and then she ended up getting her canine good citizen and then we started going down the path of therapy work with her because she's so good with people so then we went that and then I started getting more into the um, bigger bite breeds or the working breeds and the guardian breeds. Um, and then they're, they're a lot harder. And then with them, we got into, you know, uh, water work for my black Russian and then bite work for my Presa Canario. That's always been our goal with them. Like for, for us, our, you know, these animals were bred or created for a job. And I, I don't see the point of not using those skills. Um, so it's kind of the same thing with the birds. Like they can fly, why wouldn't I let them fly and encourage them to fly? I've always been around animals. And you have a military macaw, so it's clear I you see. like a challenge. Yes, <laughs> I do. I just, because I think the, it's so much more rewarding if you put in the work you know, it pays off. <laughs> There's a lot of desensitization that has to come into play. And, and, uh, I think, you know, it speaks volumes to your training and, and again, like making, making lemonade out of lemons, you know, they, they had a couple of bad experiences or one that was more bad than the other. Um, but all of that played into desensitizing. And like I said, the, the chickadee tree with like 800 chickadees flocking right past them, they didn't even yeah. care. And the doves and they're like, they've really understood what is a threat and what's mm -hmm. a irrational fear versus a rational fear. Yeah. And that's a big thing for a lot of pet parrots to learn and overcome. And it's not always easy. Yeah. And I think sneezing. So sneezing was, <laughs> so that was a big one at first. And I think when we were out here earlier, Jamie sneezed and they didn't freak out, but that was another thing. I kind of just let them work, work it out when we were inside because I'm a very loud sneezer. So I don't blame anyone. <laughs> for being scared but um so we were inside and like i sneezed and they were like what was that and they freaked out and just flew around and it was kind of one of those things where i just didn't i didn't pay attention to it i didn't make a big deal out of it i just went back to doing my normal and then they like flew back and they were like are you okay are we okay <laughs> is everyone okay and then so it just kind of one of those things where don't, as far as like just training in general, don't give attention to stuff you don't want. So um, reactions you don't like or, you know, something, a dog or a bird or I don't know, whatever other trainable animal is doing. If you don't like it, ignore it because you acknowledging it or like feeding into it just adds to that. And they're like, this is what you wanted me to do. I can do it all over again. So it's, and that's, that's how I approached the sneeze the same way. Like they spooked over me sneezing and I was like, we're not, we're not going to make this a big deal. And then they're a lot better with it. Like sometimes it's still like, whoa, but you know, they don't like spook or panic or things like that. They're like, oh yeah, she's just obnoxious when she sneezes. <laughs> so, so why did I hire you guys? I would say the main ones, I liked you guys. That was a big one. <laughs> ding, um, ding, 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 ding. So, yeah. So, before I even got into birds, like, I stalked you guys. So, heads up. Like, yeah, I was oops. watching yeah. all your videos. Like, <laughs> and <laughs> we're done. But no, like, I'm a big researcher. Like, I don't go into anything blindly, you know? And so, that's what happened with the birds. Once I found out that birds are trainable, 
um, I was like, yeah, I'm digging mm. it. Like, I'm all about this. And then, you know, the stats of they're the most rehomed bird because they're beautiful and people get them and they think it's going to be this glorious thing. And birds are terrible. Like, they're just, they're, they're work, you know, and not everyone's willing to do that. So I am. And I was like, I can provide a good home and I can also enjoy them. So like, why wouldn't I get into birds? So yeah, I completely like watched all your videos. I read through everything. And then I was like, okay, I can do this. And then I started with a rescue, Sun Conier. I don't know if I, to I, I told you guys this, right? So anyways, I started with a rescue Conier. She was just too emaciated. She had a lot of health complications. So, you know, she passed. And then I ended up with two more. So as you do, <laughs> yeah, as it goes. Um, so I had done all this training, but at the end of the day, I'm not the professional, you know, like they were still my first set of birds. Like I'm not going to be like, Oh, I know what I'm doing. No, because it's, yes, I have the training background. Yes. I have experience with, you know, the idea behind it, the, um, techniques or the stuff like that. But I've never experienced having a bird fly off. I never had experience with the predator, like the predatory birds, you know, and what the dangers are and things like that. So, uh, yeah, um, you guys had that experience. So come on over. <laughs> and I like that you, that you started like with, I don't want to say older cause you're still pretty young, but very young, but there's a, a misconception of like, hey, you only have to train baby birds. And I've got to say like my thought process has been shifting to where I, I almost enjoy the slightly, you know, not the baby, but like slightly older yet capable. I enjoy them almost more, if not definitely more because it's, I think the training is cleaner than like a baby bird's kind of all over the place. And I think so many people fall into the misunderstanding of like, oh, I have to get a baby bird yep. for flight. Yep. And I think you're a great example of like, no, look, I got two that were clipped and uh, and look what they do now. Yeah. So it's not always about the baby birds. It's about, you know, it could be still young birds or even we're working with a 16 year old macaw and a 10 to 15 year old Amazon. And, yeah. and those stories are the ones I think that really like pull on people's heartstrings. And it's like yes. finally giving the bird what it, deserves yes I think yeah like they have the confidence in life at that point you know so it's I don't know man animals are great This feeling's running.